everybody. Welcome to Madden Science. Today, we're going to be talking about skydiving. But more so, we're talking about Newton's second law and terminal velocity. This all started back in Seattle when my friend Josh and I decided to go indoor skydiving at iFly Seattle. And here's our instructor. <laughs> Can you believe this guy? He's absolutely incredible. He's a magician. He was really good at helping us learn how to skydive, at least indoor. The point of the trip was to experience science, to do it, to live it. Let's begin with Sir Isaac Newton, perhaps the greatest thinker of all time. And with his most famous, and perhaps the second most famous formula, force equals mass times acceleration. Newton's second law states from the Latin, the rate of change of momentum of a body is equal to the resultant force acting on the body and is in the same direction. And a closer look reveals that the rate of change of momentum, mv divided by t, equals the force, or f. And if we simplify that and have the change in velocity over time now equal acceleration, we get F equals MA. For our purposes, it might be a little bit more helpful to view it solved for A, where acceleration equals net force divided by a mass. And we're interested in the proportionality of it too, which means that the net force is directly proportional to the acceleration. So double the force, you get double the acceleration. And that mass is inversely proportional to the acceleration. So double the mass, and you get half of the acceleration. Skydiving indoors offers a wonderful example of Newton's second law, where acceleration equals zero, and we're in equilibrium, so where the net force equals zero. How is it that the equilibriums experienced in indoor skydiving compared to equilibrium experience in outdoor or real skydiving. Consider what's moving. In the case of indoor skydiving, we are still and the air is moving via a set of really powerful fans. Whereas in real, outside skydiving, you are moving and it's the air that is largely still. Terminal velocity is a term for being in equilibrium having zero acceleration during skydiving. It's as fast as you're going to go, and your velocity is no longer changing. So let's zoom in on Newton's second law formula. Acceleration equals net force divided by mass. What is net force, and how is it calculated? In this case, it's the sum of your forces. So the sum of your forces down which would be your weight, and the force is up, which would be air resistance. So that's Fw plus Fr, or if you view that as negative, then it's minus your force of resistance. Quick, here's a formal definition of terminal velocity. The constant speed that a freely falling object eventually reaches when the resistance of the medium through which it's falling prevents further acceleration. Again, here's the formal definition of drag. A force acting opposite to the relative motion of any object moving with respect to a surrounding fluid. So what does it depend on? Well, it might help if you think back to being a kid. So while you're thinking, check this out. What two factors are highlighted here? You can see that one would be surface area and another would be speed or how fast you're going. Now this is a simplified view of what's happening with drag and what influences it. So more fast equals more drag. More surface area equals more drag. 
take a look at this formula. You can see the force of the drag is equal to not just how fast you're going and your cross-sectional area, but also the density of the fluid and the drag coefficient between the two objects or the object and the fluid. Now you may be wondering, what does this mean for skydiving? Your surface area is your body position. So consider falling tummy first, or back first, or feet first, or head first. How is that gonna impact the amount of air that you're hitting and the amount of drag that you experience? Earth's rushing up at you at 120 miles an hour. So what is the terminal velocity of a skydiver? Well, it turns out in your normal spread out flying squirrel position, it's around 120 miles per hour. Now, if you were to fall head first, like a pencil, you might get up to 150 or even 180 miles per hour. Let's revisit Newton's second law formula. So A equals net force over mass. If you pull apart net force, you see that yeah, your weight down is gonna be remaining the same. So as you fall and you start off accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared or 9.8 meters per second every second. But as you go faster and faster and faster, Altitude. you'll be hitting the air that then pushes up against you. So more speed, more fast means more air resistance or the force of drag goes up. So your weight stays the same as your velocity increases, so does the force of drag. So more V means more FD. And as that goes up, eventually it comes to cancel out with the force of your weight. And when the force down cancels with the force up, you have reached equilibrium. That force would be zero, your acceleration would be zero, and your change of velocity would be zero. And therefore you topped out terminal velocity. controller can then dial up the amount of juice necessary to pull enough air past you to get you to equilibrium. So he controls the velocity, you control the surface area. Open your chute when the system says not before and definitely not after. Keep in mind lots of other variables come into play. Most directly, your shape. Are you flying as a big old pancake or are you more in a taco position? And the more taco you are, the less surface area you have the faster the air will need to hit you in order to keep you equilibrium. It depends on how you're flying your body, right? Uh, so yeah. the more arched, the more wind you need. The more flat you are, the less wind you are. So it's all about the surface area and how much wind you're displacing. And surely the two can play off of each other, both inside and outside. Skydiver's ability to adjust body position in all directions gives the most excellent control. Furthermore, this highlights Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and the forces come in pairs. Here you can see me being coached up to adjust my body position and hand position so as to rotate. How cool is that? The air pushes on my hand, and the hand pushes on the air. Tilted at an angle, this results in rotation. So there you have it. Skydiving, terminal velocity, Newton's second law, a little bit of Newton's third law, all wrapped into one. I hope you learned something. Hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have questions or thoughts in the comments below. Take care, everybody. All right, David. Um, <laughs> Man, science, terminal velocity, take one. Safety first. <laughs>